namhlanje making moves ivakashela two phenomenal entrepreneurs abasebenza ku service sector siqale sivakashele utebo hosi hume ongomunye baba party benkampani yaziwa ngokuthiwa itamane strategic investment elapha email rose yena ke uxoxisana nathi ngenkampani yabo ke eyama accountant ngemva kwalokho uphinda uxoxisana nathi ushela ngama challenges abhekene nawo ukubona le nkundla njengosoma business owesimama usebenza kuwona lo mkhaka ngemva kwalokho siya e river sense incubation hub SME trend ukuyohlana ne social entrepreneur ujain nkalimanga ophuma kwaka umang group yena ke uxoxisana nathi ngokushela ukuthi uthando lwakhe lokuqeqesha abantu abasha ngecomputer liqhamuka kuphi The finance, real estate, and business service sector is South Africa's biggest contributor to the country's GDP at 21.1%. Um, it's a good thing because um, it helps bring up more qualifications in the country, which is a thing that we need. I don't think it's easy to start such business. The South African banking and financial service sector is highly regarded internationally because of strong regulatory and legal framework. Yes, I think you can make money out of it. Definitely, because everywhere you go, there's technology, there's computers, there's cell phones. Yeah, it depends on which service you're rendering. South Africa has a low supply of ICT skills and is serviced by an industry which doesn't represent the demographics of the country. Kisa <laughs> Kapamo uti nge kukusani na ege kutama kasme ndake wobani. Aga nge ofisi nda ke Emil Rose nkizu uti kipiznis ndake walusu ngula ganjani futi lona li seben za ganjani. My name is Tebojo Sihume and I am a co-founder of Tamani Consulting. We're an outsourced financial function for SMMEs. We provide accounting, tax, payroll and general business consulting services to SMMEs. What makes us unique? We are more than just accountants. We help our clients grow. Our growth is vested in their growth. You can visit our website www.tamanisi.co.za or check us out on Facebook, Tamani Consulting. Hello, Lukai. Ubusebenze nkampani enkulu kakhulu uma kuza kile zike ezezimali nakulo mkhakhalo nokuwona. Omunye umuntu angathi you know that's a dream job umsebenze kade ukuthi afuna ukusebenza kuwona ajabule afune maybe ukuthaka yona le nkampani. Uyini into yakwenza ukuthi uthi sale uthi usofuna ukuphuma kuyona le nkundla leyo ngoba usuzwe ngathi bayaqina nje. Neke rata go sebetsa for that company. It's always been a passion of mine. I've always been entrepreneurial. So neke tseba le hore if neke sebetsa go company e neke batlo etsa ntho yaka. So I wanted to do that and neke batlo kala neke batlo fa batho msebetsi. So that was another reason why I decided to leave as well. This is the consultant's room. So you can see our lovely consultants. Yeah. So Batuba are the ones who our clients interact with. So kibo na ba sevetang katata when it comes to the business that we have and the clients that we do. So this is the engine of Tamani. Abantu ba sevetang like ha bangagi ikwe mbulong kumasela. Okay, so Rona Motamani, re na lady consultant day four, and re na lady director day three.
Well, they've just brought our books up to date. So we know exactly how our company's running now. We know exactly how profitable the company is. We know exactly where we stand in terms of all our finance. So we have a very good working relationship with them. Our role as Tamani is really to become the, the firm that's the business partner to SMMEs. Uh, we want to become the firm that SMEs think about in terms of providing them with solutions. Um, our perspective is very simple, is that if we help our clients grow their business, in turn our business grows. So Kamo is basically my office or the director's <coughs> office yeah. when the Ntotse series have to be discussed yeah. like Gana Kamo. Yeah. Now, you have to say what you have to say about our services in Wenza. Yes. The primary business, Yatamani, is to provide outsourced financial services because we have CAs, we have tax specialists, and we have accountants as part of the team. So, business how, and we actually then say, what are your services, what are your needs, how do we grow your business? So, just general consulting as well. So, that's our main function. And we also provide audits, we also provide tax advisory. Normally, people get into trouble with SARS or they just want to know how to treat something for tax purposes, we also help with that. So, can you just tell us about the clients in Basis? Okay, so our Renality clients, they're just running. So, we've got our creative clients, based in Bramfontein, we've got a creative agency, asset managers, um, people who run their own management consulting business. So, it really is different. Yeah. Their service is amazing, but more importantly, they think ahead of the game. So essentially what they do is they do the month-to-month -month accounting and also they do the giving audited financials. So at the end of each financial year, they basically go through the numbers and then I need those in order for me to be able to report to the financial services board. So that's why it's quite advantageous to work with them because they think ahead and then you can plan ahead and that's partly half of the game, I think. Okay, so in terms of the way Richard Abatuka thing, mm -hmm. we look at the size of their business. So Richard, how much money is the business making? And we categorize them according to that. So how business here, how it's are less than a million, you fall into our small business category. Okay. And the prices are affordable for that category. Mm -hmm. When your business is making more than a million, but less than six million, we classify you as a medium business. Mm -hmm. And then there's prices for that. And then anything above seven million, they then yeah, we yeah. then we <laughs> provide services for that. Under a million, how much? <laughs> It depends. But typically our retainers, um, which is our monthly fee, they start from as little as 3,005. People don't even know mm. that the, the service that they can get can be as little as that. Yeah. Do you earn more or less than you would if you were in a corporate? Kwa <laughs> <laughs> she has always been Tebuka or Tebza or, or, or Tebs. Oh, a very quiet kid. I think it was the primary school or so where she got an award for being a quiet child in, in the classroom. Nekidula go Soweto, Kopinville. 
Um, I was very young when I used to stay there, so I don't really remember it a lot. Magakikupula staying in a big family house with my gran and my cousins. So that was a lot of fun growing up because we were very close family. Well, Tebukho is my cousin, uh, but I see her more as a sister, really, because we grew up, basically grew up uh, together under the same roof. And um, yeah, she is my partner in crime. I was very close to Ntantla. Every family function, we'd be there together. He was the only one who was more or less my age as well. Tebukho <laughs> oh, is an amazing sister. She's. Um, everything that I like in her, you know, she's, she's very supportive of me, especially when it comes to my schoolwork and all. Um, she's loving, she's caring, very helpful. Yeah. I think when I was probably in grade eight, that's when Ratla Mo East Rand, Mo Leon Dale. I almost bought everything, you know, that has to do with sports. She tried tennis, she tried hockey, she had soccer boots, you know, so, so many things. At school, she has been getting awards, all sorts of achievement awards. I was very active Koskolong, so I would do like drama, I would do public speaking, debating, I participated in sports even though I wasn't that good at it. I'm surprised that she's gotten into the whole world of finance because I thought she'd have, be have a better chance at being a dancer. <laughs> when I was in matric making my career decision, I probably thought I should do dancing, but I had no real formal training. So for me, um, accounting was just the way to go. my parents for I want to start my own business That was a tough one because we didn't see that coming from her. They were scared that I was leaving a good company. They were scared that I was leaving my big salary. They were scared that I was leaving stability. I mean she was just promoted to a senior position. Renahanori, yo income, this person has just bought a, you know, a koloi, and then how is she going to pay for, for that car? I don't think they were scared because of me, because they know that I am driven, but I just think they were scared of the unknown. So I would decided to say, no, let's give her all our blessing and support. Yeah, that is why she registered her company here at home. I can come across as very strong and opinionated. So sometimes people say I'm bossy, but if you know me, you know it's coming from a good place. Tebukho never thinks small, you know? She always looks at the bigger picture. She's got visions and missions uh, that uh, she will want to achieve in life. And she has been focused on that. The values that I got from my parents was probably, you need to work hard. Um, you need to always do your best, and if your best gets you to number one, great, but if it doesn't, as long as you've tried your best, that's amazing. Debucho left a cushy and secure job to start a business with friends. Go to again. If you manage to get challenges, you can get a now. John go back to Pelalen Kunda, Lena, and Nefunun Genagon. I do like a cool, footing. I will make Utos on my business, Abasafus, Manga Genagon Agalu. Jenga mind your studio set to Toxana no pips. Who was Amkazeleka Bans with the business lucky? Lona, the seven Zangan. Just arrived at the set of Making Moves and I'm about to meet Pepsi. I am super excited. Can't wait to learn everything that I need to learn and just to grow my business. Although the financial services sector is still a closed game that is largely untransformed, the opportunity to service SMEs continues to grow. More young entrepreneurs are realizing the benefits of compliance and will always require financial management services. And that's one of the reasons Debucha decided to start Tamani Strategic Investments. She's here to talk to me about her business milestones as well as some of the challenges. Debucha, welcome to Making Moves. 
had Pepsi. How are you, man? Good, good. Fantastic. Take a seat. Thank you. So, mm. you had a cushy job in a corporate environment and you decided to go out and start your own business. Why did you do that? Um, primarily, it was just a yearning. I think I've always been entrepreneurial, so being in corporate structures where you're told what to do, what time you must get to work, what time you must leave, wasn't something that I wanted for myself. So, yeah, I then just decided to start my own company. You know, you've chosen to focus on small businesses, essentially. Mm. Why? And is that a sustainable path to take? Okay, so when I refer to small business, it's not micro businesses. So I'm talking about a business that's probably two to three years old with a minimum turnover of at least four million. Mm -hmm. So in the South African context, that's still considered a small business. Mm -hmm. So that's normally the kind of client that we want to attract. And the reason why we did that is we identified a gap that small businesses can't afford to have a CA as a financial manager or someone with a master's um, as a tax specialist. So we've packaged that service as an outsourced service and um, they can just pay a monthly retainer and they have that expertise at the tip of their fingertips. Do you earn more or less than you would if you were in a corporate? I think right now I'm probably more in control of what I earn. Um, my money doesn't just come in the form of a salary and a bonus and maybe in the form of a promotion. Like whatever money I make in the business, I can declare a dividend and that's how I make money. So I'm still concerned about scale though and, and achieving because you're going to have this incremental growth slowly, slowly, slowly. At which point do you really begin to grow? My concern is how many small businesses do you need to be servicing? In my mind, there's got to be some sort of target. Mm. At which point do you say we're running the kind of business from a scale and profitability perspective that we want to be running? Probably our retainer business, um, it must just cover the fixed costs and everything else we get is profit. So that's currently how we're looking at it. And in terms of how we actually make it a bit more consistent, it's just building up the profile of the business. So I've got businesses that are perfect for your kind of service, okay. but I don't know about you. How? Oh, how? <laughs> okay, so yeah, so it depends. So it depends on the kinds of, um, also the clients that we're trying to target. Are they reading the financial mail? Are they on those platforms? Those are things that we interrogate um, on a monthly basis to say what is our presence from a social media perspective? What is our presence from just PR, newspapers, TV, radio? Are we on the platforms? Are people hearing about us? Um, so, so yeah, so, so those my are things that we consider. Is they're not. Your not argument. Enough. Yeah, not enough. So do you know other consulting firms that do what we do? Uh, and you've the seen bigger the, ones, yeah, the bigger ones. Yeah, yeah, so the bigger ones. So I guess as well, because we're also a young firm, we're still growing our presence. So that when someone does mention Tamani, then people are like, oh yes, I've heard about them. Or oh yes, I know Teboho from Tamani. So that's still gonna grow. So I'm not saying that everything is perfect and it's done, but that's something that obviously we need to look at. Okay, I'm sure we'll be hearing lots Completely. more from you in the future. <laughs> Um, and well done. I think you guys are bright and you're doing the right thing. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for sharing your story. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. And for I hope inviting you inspired me. someone out there mm. who wants to be you or, or, you know, wants to get into a similar business. Awesome. Cool. Thank you. We've discussed Debojo's business, unpacked some of their challenges and identified opportunities for them to grow in the financial services sector. I'm sending her for a coaching session with Martine Solomons so that she can discuss ways to capitalize on these opportunities and maybe have a sounding board to discuss some of her ideas in terms of growing her business. My interview with Pepsi was quite good and also challenging. He made me think of quite a few things about my business in terms of targeting, in terms of marketing, what are the things that I'm thinking about just to make it a bit more consistent. So I actually thought it was really good. And you feel you don't have time for yourself, you, you're doing everybody's work, but it's, it's, it's your demon, it's not their demon. That's true. And you also can't play big brother for everybody.
If you were to sum your business up in terms of your challenges at the moment, top three, what would it be? Um, probably marketing outside my close circle. Okay. Um, staffing issues, making sure that they get on the ball very yeah. quickly. Um, when you're a business owner, you kind of jack of all trades. So yeah, yeah. You're dealing with labor and you're dealing with yeah. work delivery. So okay. yeah. What yeah. type of marketing are you doing at the moment? Okay, so primarily we get our business through word of mouth. Okay. But we also, you can find us on social media. We've got a presence on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Okay, I think we all agree that social media uh, is is very effective nowadays mm. and if you're wanting to tap into the SMME market that's definitely where you need to be mm. having um, your business presence, uh, your brand, uh, creating brand awareness. Mm. Now for me, uh, so I'm in the financial services industry yes. as well okay. and you know what, educating people is obviously um, quite important mm, but we need to make use of the platforms quite effectively. So. On social media, for example, it's tax season right now and yeah. you're the tax professional within your organization. You should be doing daily tips yeah. on, you know, the, this is what you can be deducting as a tax deduction, this is what you shouldn't be doing, this is what the changes are. I'm not on social media every day. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I thought it was actually such an interesting spin. I think. It, it's such a powerful medium and the more you use it or the better way you use it, the more you can get reach. Your company is very young, mm. so and, and I'm assuming that your team is quite young as well. Yeah. So sharing is, is extremely important. Sharing strategies, sharing growth, sharing ideas, sharing um, vision, yeah. sharing all of that. No, I agree. And just doing it in a non- uh, work environment um, okay. as well. Take it out of the workplace and when you're out and, and, and you're chatting and everybody's in a relaxed mode, mm. you, you need to keep your ear quite closely to the ground and hear what the, what the gripes are. Yeah. Everybody wants to feel important. They do. And needed, <laughs> right? Yeah, it's true. Okay. True, true. We want to have control over most things. Yeah, true. And um, are you a control freak? A bit. Okay. Um, so, and I'm a perfectionist. So, okay. I think that's something that I'll obviously have to work on just by myself because you really can't do everything yourself, yes. which is what I'm realizing. I'm, I'm tired. I'm working late hours, and it, it, it could be easier. So, my advice to you would be, as directors, to sit and to document a working document. Mm. As this is our process for that, this is your roles and responsibilities, etc. And then just every week, you know, in your directors' meetings, yeah. touch on those. Yeah, so in terms of um, wearing different hats in the same business, I think that was also a, a great advice from her just to say, this should be something that should be shared, even just amongst your other partners. So it's something that I definitely will consider. I think it might take quite some time, but I'll consider it. But everybody needs to have buy-in on it. That's true. And you also can't play big brother for everybody because then you're going to be cutting yourself short from the important things that you're needing to take care of. Exactly. Because you get involved in things that you shouldn't really I be shouldn't involved in. I shouldn't be doing, in. I agree. And then the things that you should be involved in technically gets um, neglected. Yeah, sure. Right? And you feel you don't have time for yourself, you, you're doing everybody's work, but it's, it's, it's your demon. It's not their demon. <laughs> All the best to you and your and your business partners. Thank you. And just give us a shout if there's anything Definitely else. Definitely. Okay. Thanks. I learned a lot from her. I think she's quite experienced in business. Um, so yeah, she just gave me a few tips on how to market my business better. Just gave me a few ideas on things that I should look out for. So it was really insightful. Business <laughs>
My name is Jane Ngadimang. I'm the founder and managing director of Omang Training and Development. We're an accredited training provider and we focus on training in remote communities, townships and informal settlements. Part of our services, we also manufacture mobile or containerized technology centers, which we place in remote communities without infrastructure and technology. We're also passionate about developing social entrepreneurs. You can reach us on www.umangdevelopment.co.za. How are you? Good day. Good day. Good day. Good day. Good day. What happens in my office in Yalona? Because I want to battle Hawaii. They're all on different assignments or different projects. So we don't spend a lot of time more officing because we actually have to take training to where the people live. No service in the HR department for me was hiring for my 10 years. And then what decided in, now you want to go into business. Utile Juang that now you say, you know, let me go into business. Yeah, I think because of the way both my parents are entrepreneurs. So I took it from a, a very young age. You know your weekends, chance to go to and support you and help the family. Mm -hmm. And you know, I wanted to do something to give back to communities because that's what I'm passionate about. On those numbers, you can be able to change those numbers. For example, now, if you check the numbers that are reflecting, you can change them and make them above 1,000. Before the Chidaka Omang training, I was just a uh, community. I was just a community. I was just a community. I was just a community. I feel Jane is owner. I feel like as my sister, as my mother. Nuri, they're the best employer. So now, how was uh, business here how uh, started? Kaubani, you know, Motakare, Hotwela Musebezi, to go into this line of work, mm. it hasn't been easier one. In this process, it is necessarily, yeah. although I was very excited about it. Essentially, I used uh, some of my savings, the Provident Fund, wow. uh, to Huge invest. Huge gamble. Yes, yes, and I think it paid off, to yeah. be honest. Although, the first two years, it wasn't an easy process. Nekisa. Uh -huh getting accreditation would actually take so long. So being a facilitator myself, and that's how I kept on going yeah. through those years. Yeah. One of the things that we provide computer literacy training. Yes, okay. So as Omang, we're very passionate about helping people to access technology. Yeah. It will empower my pillow on it. So if you think of if you know how to use productivity programs or use the internet, mm. that means that you can find information that can improve your life. Mm. So this is one of the reasons why I'm so passionate about computer literacy. Mm -hmm. But over and above that, life skills. If you think of unemployed youth, a lot of the times have it's okay, but navigate it through life. Jang. Yes. So life skills helps you to say how do you present yourself mm -hmm. to the world. Among has a special relationship. It's not just one of our businesses here, but also has a partnership relationship with River Sands because one of the things it offers is really needed. The introduction of computer skills and making them accessible to people with all levels of education. So it, it's just kind of a, a whole rounded, rounded set of skills that a person needs if you're going to, to get somewhere in business or even just to increase your chances of finding work. So this is what we manufacture. Revit's a mobile or containerized technology center. Mm -hmm. So this is one of the new models, Zarona. But usually it's just one classroom mm -hmm. and then it lined up Kaditeske yes. with computers. And we prefer laptops just for security purposes. Okay. So we're able to put this Modi community in. Say no, we infrastructure like training or technology. Yeah. So the service 
Mm -hmm. uh, one is that they can use this as an internet cafe, mm -hmm. two as a training center. Mm -hmm. So Rona as Omang, because Rona Quality Assurance, we mm -hmm. are accredited. Yes. We're able to empower them who mm -hmm. provide that type of training. Yes. So the entrepreneurs, I think, one of them must be a graduate. Mm -hmm. who are a trainer in to be facilitators. Okay. We do a basic drawing for her. Um, we, we look at the layout, how we can fit everything together. And then, uh, and then we get that passed by her. If, uh, if everything's fine, then we go ahead and build. But it's, it's a matter of looking at what, what sections you need. So you need X amount of space for, for training center. Do we need an ablution? Do we need a kitchen? Do we need offices? Whatever that's required in that. And then we put that, we put that together and we put a, a package together for them. So another Tupakudi communities that you are empowering Liba Tusa, mm. can they really afford the services that you're bringing to them? No, they can't afford it. And that is why Merogo Aruna is so important to us because we go on their behalf, re approach uh, private companies, yeah. the corporates, to actually sponsor certain communities. So then run a manufacturer mm -hmm. and then provide the training. And we identify community AWA and place this there mm -hmm. as an additional infrastructure for community AWA. Yes. What type of clients are we talking about? So we're talking big corporates, mm -hmm. we're talking multinationals, we're talking parastatals as well. Right. Ah. That are, so we support the CSI initiatives. Yes. Okay. Can I tell you a learnership? One year, that technology center can literally turn over 1.5 million. Jane was a little footy. What could a lapana ekurman? Jenga manch. Yenagi, who said no muzi lapagi eko? We was member with some Varashele lapawaki efois. Lapocona is a cotton sun and I, Nabangan bag. Joa Pelagabes Jela would ticket Lapocona bona bebe culacon. We in the og and get called a simony essi. Footy and I go chaining, who pinned the ash chelo would ticket Yena, win to us, enter. I'm from Kuruman in the Northern Cape, and Gile Katana School of Khaled Science High. And from there, I pursued my education, basically moved to Cape Town. I went to UCT. She's a very driven child. She was a very driven child, even from her early ages. Hana Kala School, obviously preschool. Anasabati. I chose a school long in Ili Mereko. Abambara no, I cannot this school silly because Abam Wali, Abaiti Nix, Baba Roberts at all day. She always wanted to be up there with the best. Cusco long in Ili, Wanona Ling, Julie Chanangabudi beauty contest. It was one of the things um, ba, Barata to take part in the journey. I think the first time I met her was school preschool. We used to have YTD, uh, not modeling, uh, beauty contest. And I was like, who's that girl? Kabutisa, more uh, the girls, Bandre Practice Lebona for that week. But no, King Wanawa, the local business owner, Meshak and Kadimang, or owner Saloon. I was like, oh my goodness, that's why she looks so good. So, I was like, it, it looks like I'm not going to take this one. So always in Ilifan, Bananyana Baba, sticking out, you know, Horeho Yanko, Makishining, Aulingi. Ili, Mama Jane, Mama this, Mama this. I, I still call her Majena. I'm that person that uh, makes friends very easily. Um, I'm not intimidated by any environment, uh, and I'm very adventurous. I'm that person that does skydiving, bungee jumping, you name it. I must try something out once, at least once. I see a follower. She's a type of person who will take the lead. You can just imagine um, Kuruman many, many years ago, in the middle of, of apartheid, if you like. There were not uh, a lot of opportunities out there, okay? But you could see that this child 
if she was exposed to opportunities, that she would grab them with both hands, if you like. This is the reason why I still work and go back to those communities. Just because I want to help others, other young people, um, to actually reach for their dreams and connect with those opportunities. You may sit. Well, Jane and I met about 12 years ago. We started working for a company together, um, totally different positions. She was actually my boss, right? So we already had a professional uh, relationship and then which became very personal because we became best friends. Yeah, we clicked it at work and then we, we became close friends afterwards and we decided to leave the corporate world from there and start a business. It, it, was, a, it was a natural transition when we, we, we started working together. We really do complement each other. I'm strong in certain areas and, and she's strong in other areas and, and that is why I, I was very happy for her to join the business because I knew she would add real value, and, and so she has. Hey, Jane. Again, also my business in Jack Pell. Got our pinned as a little cousin, Kuluga Kulu, a Tutukisani in Pilozaban. Her work is extraordinary, and she is certainly uplifting communities in rural areas and townships. Got our Gakona my challenges, up again, and our Uglum Kakaluna Seven Zawan. Now my challenges. Aso tinga guti geyena, aze na masuge amba lazo msiza guti business like itu tu. So I've just arrived at the Make and Move studio. I'm pretty excited to meet Pepsi and the coaches. I'm looking forward to some of their advice. Jane Gadimang's business relies on funding from corporate entities. Without these funds, her business might not be able to fulfill their vision of equipping disadvantaged communities with computer, life, and business skills. She's here to talk to me about this challenge and about the future prospects of her social enterprise. Jane, welcome to Making Moves. Yay, great. Thank you so much for having me. Fantastic. Lovely to you meet look you, lovely. Pepsi. Thank you so much. Take a seat. Thanks. All right, so you are a not-for-profit entity. You're a social enterprise. So it's a business, but you reinvest all your profits into the business to help it grow. Essentially, that's what we do. So among training and development, that essentially is my heart. It's, um, and that is why it's not so much profit-driven. Um, the vision actually is to empower other entrepreneurs to be able to uh, share into the business, as in running their own internet cafe and training. Okay, so you're in a very difficult business, in a difficult space, in the sense that you are providing services to people who can't afford oh, yeah. those services. Yeah, quite right. So you need to go out and essentially search for donations in mm. order to fund your business. Yeah. I mean, you can call them any number of things, but sure. ultimately they're donations. That's what it is, right? essentially. Yeah. So how, how do you then survive? You know, are there enough corporates out there that are willing to part with money? No, there, I mean, the answer is, uh, is that there aren't enough. We supplement, or, or a lot of what we make is actually coming from the CETAs themselves. So the bigger plan for us is to actually have local people owning the, the, the technology center. Through the training, so we identify a, an unemployed graduate, um, definitely must have a woman, one woman, uh, definitely being uh, a co-owner of the business. Uh, so essentially we're looking at three. And then we capacitate them as a training company to manage the internet cafe and the training center and also develop, especially the graduate, to become a facilitator. And so you yeah. build these labs yeah. that are mobile, yeah. containerized, you'll go and put yes. them in a community and you'll get money from a CETA in order to train people within this lab environment. Is, exactly. Is yeah, so essentially we're looking now at a social franchise. Okay, but, but here's what I don't get. I'm yeah. in a village. Yes. You want me to run an internet cafe. How yeah. many people in that village need internet cafe services? Oh my goodness, so many people. To do what? So here's the thing, just because you're in a remote area doesn't mean that you are removed from the world and you don't want to tap into it and be a player in it and be active in it, right? And remember another thing is that we are a social business, so we're bringing basic 
essential services, mm -hmm. right? Computer literacy has now become a prerequisite. Almost like, you know, driver's license is also, we're kind of getting there as well. As a business, as Omang, we help that uh, technology center or the owner of it to actually attract a learnership. Can I tell you a learnership? One year, that technology center can literally turn over 1.5 million. That would for, mean... For training how many people? 20, 20 on a learnership. 20 and people so, on a learnership. Yeah, and okay. so that would mean that the business owner, if we're looking at three, they could literally have a salary of about 10, eight, between eight and 10,000 rands. And they supplement it with the internet cafe services. So they, this is they, the, the part I don't buy is the internet cafe and those Yeah, but services. that's fine. That's the training bit mm -hmm. is absolutely necessary. You could even do online training all of a sudden, you know? Yeah. So you don't always have to travel out. You could literally be studying in one of these technology you see, centers. that makes sense. Yes. That makes sense. And the IT programs, bit, yeah. I do not buy. Yeah. What I do buy mm -hmm. is I love the fact that you're offering the computer skills training yes. and the fact that once, and I feel like you should focus more on, on the second bit of it that once I've gotten computer skills training, mm -hmm. at least give me some basic modules or some modules and yeah. some online training, mm -hmm. totally unrelated. Whether it is K53 online and I can learn how to get my driver's license or at least get my learners, yeah. or I'm learning you know, basic artisan skills mm -hmm. online or whatever it is, yeah. that way you're giving me actual uh, um, knowledge that I can get accredited for. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you for coming on. I love Thanks the work that you're doing. Me. You really Thank are doing you. important Thank you so work. Much. I'm absolutely encouraged by the amazing work that Jane is doing. It's unique and addresses the challenge of illiteracy in the country. However, she still needs to address the challenge of funding as well as that business model that I'm not entirely certain about, this internet cafe versus training center. So I'm sending her for a coaching session with Palisa to discuss ways to mitigate some of her challenges. Yeah, my interview with Pepsi, of course it was uh, interesting. Um, yeah, we went back and forth here and there. And uh, I think in the end, yes, I managed to convince him. Your focus is really on the rural areas, right? Yes. And you want to make an impact across the country, specifically in those communities. Yes. Now, for you to grow your business mm -hmm. um, and for you to extend your impact, mm -hmm. what are your expansion plans? The business model has changed uh, from how we started. We started off just training providers. Yes. Um, of course, we've always had a focus uh, in rural communities. Okay. We are developing other entrepreneurs. Okay. And part of that means, you know, we manufacture technology centers that can be placed in these communities. Okay. You will then manufacture the containers yes. that you provide, and then the entrepreneurs that are on the ground pay you for yes. the containers. Yes. It would be in such a way that there are two options either CSI through CSI or corporate companies that are interested in adopting a certain community. Okay. But also, if we own the, uh, the manufacturing, that means our operational co costs go, go we'll down. Drop by considerably. Yes, so that makes it affordable for a social un or an entrepreneur to invest money into this business. Okay. And that also means that because if you're coming from a rural community, you may not necessarily be able to obtain a loan. So if we own the manufacturing process, that also means that we're able to give them an option to, you know, rent to own. How long is that time where they're renting to own for them to finally own the actual asset themselves? So okay. it could be anything between a period of a year and a half to two years. Okay, for them to eventually have been able to pay you yes. back for the container. Mm -hmm. Now, when you are capacitating these SMEs, you're providing them with the markets because you bring the learnerships to them. Mm -hmm. You're providing them with the containers and you're teaching them how to run so that they now facilitate the training. Mm -hmm. At what point do they become entrepreneurs that can find their own learnerships? How do they become fully sustainable where they're not dependent on you, mm -hmm. where they're now operating on their own? Are you capacitating them so that they can actually now find their own markets? 
so that you don't yeah. become a yeah. feeder. No, absolutely, such. absolutely. Yes. So a lot of the work that we do, we spend it on training and upskilling them so that they become independent of us because that means that we're also able to scale out and develop other entrepreneurs. Okay. So, so it's very important for us to be able to do that where they're independent that way. However, when it comes to training, of course, they are, you know, the um, quality assurance issues. Yes. So as much as it is a training center, if they're not accredited, they'd not be able to own the full chain in that way. So they would use your accreditation? They would have to rely heavily on us Until on the quality when? assurance part of things. Until we were able to see that it's possible if to, for us to facilitate that interaction between the entrepreneur and CETA. But that would be the job of CETA to actually ascertain whether that, uh, that entrepreneur is ready to run independently. And if you have a, a, a centre that does not function well for whatever reason, mm -hmm. say they're conducting the training and the, the quality drops and what, what risk is that on your business? Well, there is, there is substantial risk because um, ultimately it's the CETA will hold us accountable. Okay. And the repercussions also is that then you don't get paid. Okay. So it's also in the interest of that entrepreneur to really get their quality standards right because they know that it hurts their pocket. Okay. So they remain accountable as well. Okay, now that makes sense. I do like the idea that the SMEs that you are assisting, especially in the communities that you are working in, are going to be able to run their own centers and run their own businesses. I think it would be ideal that you, part of your value proposition is the fact that we will capacitate, capacitate you so much to such an extent that you no longer rely on us that you can actually find your own learnerships because that's when you're teaching them true business skills. Absolutely. You're no longer a feeder, you're not, they're actually able to go find their own clients. Absolutely. And I think, I think that's the strategy that your business is following is actually quite strong and I think you're gonna really, really take this on. This will be a really great project for you. Thank you so much. Cool. I appreciate your help. I think she's a strong entrepreneur. I think she's got a lot of focus. Um, I, I think she's smart in that she's learned how to leverage um, different networks and different individuals to help a business going, which is something that entrepreneurs really get right. So I think that's a very strong point on her side. The coaching session with Palisam, you know, I found it very valuable. Um, she made me realize something very critical and, and that is to what extent would we be able to capacitate our entrepreneurs or the social entrepreneurs in these local communities. I appreciated that advice uh, because yes, indeed it will help our company, um, not, uh, you know, or rather their company to be more self-reliant at a certain point.